Hi, I'm Eli Cairo, and I'm a bacon expert. Oh my god, yeah, that's heaven. It looks like bacon A and bacon B are streaky bacon or American bacon. Why we say American bacon? It's kind of important because if you were to order bacon in any English speaking country besides America, you might get a complete different product. The word bacon just means any fatty piece of pork that has been cured, salted, or smoked. When meat makers go to purchase raw bellies for bacon making, we have two grades that you can purchase in. We have A and B. It looks like bacon A is a grade B bacon and bacon B is a grade A bacon. Confusing, but we'll get through this. Grade A bacon is usually center cut bacon. It's the middle part of the belly. It's the most desirable. It's very even, as you can see. It has a fatty layer, a lean layer, a fatty layer, and a lean layer. That's the ideal bacon for production of what you would get in like a pre-sliced package at, at a store. When you say grade B bacon, it just means that it's not as center or as uniform as the bacon. It's the end, it could be the end towards the shoulder or the end towards the ham. You still usually get the four layers, but it's just a little bit uneven, harder for people to cook perfect, and isn't exactly what people are picturing when they're ordering bacon. The first thing I look for when I'm going to purchase bacon is to see if it's smoked over real apple wood or used liquid smoke. If you look at the outside of the bacon, you're gonna get a nice, beautiful, dark color on it. You wanna see that. So the smoke actually came in contact with the outside of this bacon. On this bacon over here, if you look at the side of it, you can tell that it's the same color as it is on the inside of the bacon. That would make you think that it never actually came in contact with smoke. When you receive your bellies, there's two ways to start bacon production and curing it. Bacon production, when you dry cure it, is when you just take very simple ingredients of salt, nitrate, a little bit of sugar, and you put that directly onto the pork. It takes about a week under cure till the salt penetrates, the nitrate and the cure gets inside of it, and it makes a much more consistent bacon. If you do a wet brine, which looks like bacon B is, you take water, liquid smoke, brown sugar, some people put corn syrup in it, and then what you do is you would take these bellies and you can actually see there's some holes. That could be from bacon injectors, so big needles you put inside of it and pump it for the liquid smoke. And that bacon can directly go into an oven and then be cooked up just in steam, never having touched the smokehouse whatsoever, and then off to packaging. The difference is bacon A will take about a week and bacon B could be done in about 15 seconds. Also with bacon A, you would have to cook it all the way through to render it perfect. All the moisture has been rendered out of it, nice slowly chilled and sliced. Once you render this in your pan at home, you're gonna most likely get less fat and less waste. And on this bacon, you're gonna lose all the extra fat and all the moisture in your pan. You can pull it apart and see that it pretty much looks like raw bacon. It's like raw belly. <laughs> you guys got that? Bacon A, the second you pull it up, God, you smell it, it smells like real smoke. You can see it looks like a beautiful cooked piece of pork. I mean, that smells so good, I think I should try a piece. Get that out of the way real quick. Oh mm, my God, yeah, that's heaven. You can tell that's already a quality bacon. Sorry, should I not ate that? Let's go put them in a pan and see how they taste. Start it in a nice hot pan. See these are gonna shrink up rather quickly. I'll get some smoke alarms in this place. So ready, it smells so good. All right, we got them all cooked up. You can see they're completely different. Bacon B here stayed long. It's nice, it's what you picture as a bacon. Bacon A just shriveled up a little bit different. It looks a little bit more rustic. The streaks throughout the middle are darker. On the outside, the smoke is really obvious. Both of them look like beautiful bacon, but uh, now let's taste them and see what it's like. I'm gonna start with bacon A. Mmm, perfect crunch. Yeah, let's get in there. Mmm. It's not greasy, it crumbles nicely, it's got a good bite. That bacon is delicious. Let's try this bacon over here. Oh, that's really good bacon too though. This bacon's a little bit more greasy, barely smoky at all, and is definitely liquid smoke. But that's kind of like the classic bacon, the bacon you grew up eating. I mean, that's the bacon that I love on a BLT with white bread. This is the bacon that I love cooking on the holiday weekends for my family. It has much more flavor, more nuanced. It tastes really delicious. It has depth. It makes you stop and think like, oh, this is a very high quality bacon. 
It's a tricky one because center cut can cost more in raw product, but I'm still gonna put my money on bacon A here. Definitely took longer to produce. It's definitely handmade. Great bacons. I really hope I'm right here. Whew. Oh my God, not even a comparison. When you're shopping for American streaky bacon, I prefer to go to a deli that will be able to slice the whole belly to order. That makes the best quality bacon. You can ask them to slice it as thick as you'd like. If you're shopping for bacon B, if you're buying it off the counter, then the pre-shingle in a wrap, look for that it's a organic or antibiotic free bacon. That at least you know it comes from a healthy, happy pig. Turkey bacons. To be totally honest, I don't know all that much about turkey bacon. This is the one product that I've never made. First thing I think about, turkeys don't have bellies, right? So how do you make a bacon out of it? You essentially just make sausage and then you set them into forms, smoke them or cook them in any which way, and then you put them on a slicer and shingle them to make them look like bacon. This is actually a pretty cool bacon and a very awesome meat maker's trick. What they've done here is they have a mold that makes it look like it was sitting on a smoke rack, and then you can see we have two different colors, which is a really cool trick. This part is made from the dark meat, and this part is usually the whiter lean meat. And then when they're filling it, somehow they've created this process to fill the molds and it must like just separate it a little different keep it kind of like a meatloaf and then steam it or smoke it uh b you can see it's like a little bit more coarser it seems like there's more lean turkey meat inside of here this one could have been you know wet brined again as you pull on it it's a little raw kind of looks good you know it has little chunks of meat inside of there but it's more like a sausage i kind of like it it's a little bit more rustic looking it's definitely not as processed to look like bacon as that one is the people that love turkey bacon are the people that don't like pork or they're looking for what is a perceived healthier bacon but a little insider trading about turkey bacon is that since it is a sausage we can add as much fat as we want into these just be very careful when you're purchasing if you're really looking for a leaner turkey bacon that you look on the nutrition's on the back to be sure that you're not actually consuming a bacon that has actually higher fat content. Oh boy, let's go uh, get these into a pan and crisp them up and see how they taste and uh, take an educated guess. Awesome, they're crisped up. These things are crazy looking. Uh, I can't wait to try them. It looks like a perfect piece of bacon. That little color stuff's pretty cool. Let's try it. There's zero crunch, not too salty. Tastes pretty fatty to me. I wouldn't say that's a lot of lean. I'm not even getting much smoke on it. It's definitely sweet. There's definitely corn syrup in there. It's a lot of process. I'm gonna assume there's also like probably phosphates or something to keep it in there, citric acid to extend the shelf life. It's a unique product for sure. Uh, this one looks cooler, I think to me. It's got a like little <laughs> different colors. It looks like more chunk. Crumbly. Definitely tastes smoke. It's actually got a pretty good chew to it. Mm, I, yeah, this is great. It's got good flavor. I'd eat that. The thing it is, is I think they're great products. It's just it's hard to it's hard to call them a bacon. They're not all crunchy and belly, but I think it's more of like a smoked poultry product in the shape of a bacon than it is an actual bacon, which I guess that's what it is. This is gonna be hard, but I'm gonna go ahead and just guess. I just think it would be extremely hard to get a technique that separates the color. You're taking dark meat, you're taking lean meat, and you got some flavor and it's cooked up so perfect. And I don't know, maybe that's the, re maybe that one is the cheaper one. I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, turkey bacon A, but I'm splitting hairs here. Please hope I'm right. No way, did I miss it? No, oh, I like half! <laughs> See what I know? Who knows? <laughs> I wasn't even close. What do I know? I guess what I learned from this, if uh, something just looks a little more processed or just doesn't taste as delicious, it's probably the cheaper one. I guess when you're uh, going out looking for turkey bacon, uh, just don't listen to me. <laughs> just a meat expert. Canadian bacon. It's like American bacon, but friendlier and with better healthcare. Canadian bacon in actual is more like a ham. 
The true Canadian bacon, when I think of Canadian bacon, is bacon A over here. It's actually the entire loin of the pig, and it's cured in an entire whole piece, very similar to a ham. Traditionally, the really good ones are done in a wet brine that have tons of flavor in it, bay, black pepper, sugar, salt, cure. The loin is then put in the brine, then it's held there for about a week, then it's pulled out, it's hung, and then it's smoked very slowly over applewood or a hickory or some sort of hardwood until it's cooked all the way through. As I said, it was the loin of the pig. This is the very back of the pig. This is also the pork chop. The streaky bacon, if you were to hold this like this, would come off of this part of the loin and then go down all the way underneath the belly. It definitely smells like it has other, you know, aromatics in there. You get black pepper, I'd say white pepper. Definitely, no doubt about it, real smoke. Yeah, I'm excited to eat that. Canadian bacon B is more like what we now think of the Canadian bacon as. This is actually a sausage. You take ham meat, other big chunks of lean pieces of the pig, and you brine them, and then you make a sausage emulsification. Then you fold in these big chunks of ham, then you put it inside of a casing, then you hang it up and smoke it just like a sausage. Then you chill it, and then once it's done, you strip the casing off the outside, and so it uh, looks like a Canadian bacon, but to be honest, with you, the most traditional true Canadian bacon should be a whole piece of loin slow cured and smoked. You can see it is more like a sausage. You're getting air bubbles inside there. That means that maybe the emulsification or the process wasn't exactly done perfect. The advantage for a processor is that you can use all of the trim and all of the other parts of the pig to fully utilize it. The drawback is, is crafty meat makers can add ourselves a little bit more fat to it. I mean, we can increase the fat on this thing up to 30 to 40% and you wouldn't even notice. So yeah, that's all you can see from here. Um, let's go cook it up and see how it tastes. Yeah, gorgeous. So we have the bacon all cooked up here, ready to go. You can see that the loin bacon kind of squared up. It kept its shape as a loin would. If you look at it kind of like that, it just looks like a whole piece of lean meat connected together. There's not like big fatty particles in between. On the outside, you can see the color's different. It's definitely been touched with real smoke on the outside, as did this one. The outside is also browned up, so that's a good sign that it was either dunked in liquid smoke or actually had smoke touching it. You can see there's just different colors in there there's parts that are definitely pieces of ham and all through here and then in between there you're getting like the fatty piece of sausage emulsified also smells really good though so let's try it i'm going to start with a the loin in the traditional canadian bacon there mm. Mm. what i really love about canadian bacon is that it's so pure right it's very very lean so you get the taste of the pork but this one definitely does have white pepper black pepper in the brine really beautiful apple smoke. This took a nice, long, very gifted hand to produce this product. I think it's very, very good. This one over here is beautiful. Not a whole lot of flavor, not a lot of nuances through it. And there's a little bit of sour in there. So as you're eating it, there's like a little, I'd say maybe like a lactic acid. And what people do when you make sausage, you'll add like a little citric acid or you'll slightly ferment it to give it, just giving it a little process so you can keep this on the shelf maybe a little bit longer. That one's really dry, it's burly, a little salty. Judging that this is the whole loin of the pig, it is one big piece of meat and you only get two off of every pig. That alone should make the cost of making it a lot more expensive. With a round bacon, the sausage one here, you could take all the parts of the legs, a little bit of the trim, the stuff that's not necessarily lean, and then you could put it into a sausage, making the raw cost much lower. I'm gonna have to say that this Canadian bacon is the more expensive Canadian bacon. A, you know, this is the Canadian bacon that you'd want to serve to the Canadian in your family. Super duper lean, so if you have somebody coming over that's worried about fat, this is the bacon you'd want to serve to them. This one is an awesome product. You can just riddle those bubbies up and put them on a sandwich, top it with egg, or put a hollandaise over the top of it. It's an amazing product. So if you're looking for a Canadian bacon, you're gonna buy, again, remember the shape. Make sure it looks like the loin. It's uh, kind of a rectangle with a little bit of fat up on the top. This one, if you see it at the grocery store, it could be in a shingle pack, just like streaky bacon, but it'll be round. That's kind of like the full sign that it's most likely processed a little bit more. 
Awesome, these are really cool bacons. This bacon on the right here is a UK English bacon is what we call it. Sometimes it's called Imperial bacon or Royal bacon. I love it so much because I feel like the English did something very, very smart. They took the Canadian bacon right here, which is the loin of the pig, and then they kept the fat on and part of the streaky bacon onto the side. So you're getting the best of both America and Canada. Absolutely the most simple and elemental of all the bacons. This bacon is just cured. So so you add salt, nitrate, and then you keep it in refrigeration the entire time. You actually don't cook it or smoke it whatsoever. Bacon B is definitely a very special bacon, judging by the looks. It looks like German Black Forest bacon or a Alpen Mountain Ham bacon that they call Landrauchschinken or a Northern Italian that they call Speck. You can actually tell this is the exact same cut of bacon. Bacon B has been cured, smoked, and fully cooked. And then this one is still raw. Undeniably smells like absolute heaven. So the way that they process that is they would take the same cut of meat, you would do the cure the same exact way, and then you would press it into a form. And judging by the beautiful outside color here, I would assume that they produced what we call couleur. That's when you take a big vat of sugar and you burn it, then you add a little bit of water to it, and then you submerge the entire ham yeah, that's one that you should definitely try raw. Oh my God, that is so good. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm, yeah, and on the outside, you can see it's got really beautiful fresh herbs like rosemary, black pepper, some chili flake, real, real smoke. It's got that very, very heavy smoke. I would assume that this piece of meat was smoked for maybe 48 hours. Very similar to the Canadian bacon on both of these bacons. It's impossible to add extra additives to it. So it's very raw, very simple. Let's go take these beautiful bacons and go put them inside of a pan and see what they taste like hot. Oh, it smells so good. Awesome. I just cooked them up. They're back. Let's see here, we'll start with the UK or the English bacon. Doesn't smell like smoke or anything. It's just very, very simple. Mm. Yeah. This bacon, it's just so delicious and so simple. Super concentrated pork flavor. A Little bit of sugar on the outside or in the cure, but honestly, it's very elemental. Just beautiful pork, griddled up. I could eat a lot of that right now for sure. Let's try this guy. Let's try the fatty piece first. Mm, the crunch is great. Oh, it's got an unbelievable amount of depth. You got flavor coming from smoke. Mm, the pork is amazing, not too salty, just melts in your mouth. I mean, this was really, really good raw, and so you could eat it definitely raw sliced, or you could cook it up and, uh, you know, eat it with your eggs or on a pasta or anything. This thing's amazing. Both these are amazing. I could eat an unbelievable amount of both of these. This one is tricky. They're both definitely wonderful bacons. I'm sure none of them are cheap, but I assume that this bacon with how hard it was to produce and that it is fully cooked is gonna be the more expensive of the two bacons, but they're both amazing bacons. I hope I'm not wrong, because this one could be crazy. Yeah, Whew, that was close. Bacon A is a perfect example of simplicity in a bacon. Not overwhelming, you know, it's just a great bacon, not too much going on, just a way to start the day. And this bacon on the left, this is definitely an experienced bacon. If you want to slice it raw for like an antipasta, if you want to consume it uncooked in the morning with fruits, that would be an amazing way to use this bacon. Griddled up, you're just raising the bar. I mean, this is a bacon you're gonna eat like, you know, once a year and you're gonna be like, this is the greatest bacon memory of the year. You go out shopping for bacon, there's many different types. My favorite way is to go talk to a butcher counter, or a deli person that's gonna slice the bacon to order for you and have the conversation of what you're looking for, how thick you like your bacon, if you like a Canadian bacon, a imperial bacon or a streaky bacon, but I do think it's best sliced to order by the pound. But if you're out there and you're gonna buy pre-sliced uh, bacon, make sure you're looking for, you know, USD organic or antibiotic free. Make sure that you're getting the bacon that at least the pigs will let it really healthy and a happy life.